What is happening this year? First, the actual best animated film wins best animated film, then a good video game movie came out, and now a DC movie is the best movie I've seen all year. DC, I don't know what's happened over there, but you've actually put out three good movies in a row. I know Justice League was bad, but Jesus. Aquaman was cheesy as hell, but rolled with it and had some really interesting camera work. Shazam was just plain fun and had plenty of heart. And then you have Joker. Joker is the best film I've seen this year. It's bursting with colour, seeping emotion, and it knows exactly what it is. Let's get into it. Joker is actually a documentary about those clown attacks from 2016, except these ones go way too far. I ended up seeing this film twice. This review was meant to go up on Saturday, as I saw Joker on opening night, but this was the first film I've been back to see a second time before posting a review, and I think that this second rewatch was necessary. Both times I went, my screening was sold out, and I'm really glad a film like this is doing so well. Going into this film for the first time, expectations were... Uh, low? I mean, can you blame me? Then they came out with the time accurate Warner Brothers logo. I'm fully convinced now that if your film has a custom logo, you're in for a good time. Unless your dream works. When the film starts, we finally figure out where all of the colour from Batman vs Superman went. It was all dumped here. Everything just looks good straight away, and it's only a taster for what the film will offer later. The star of the show, you, you know, I'm not even going to attempt that. Mr. Phoenix provides the best performance I've seen this year. It's truly something else. The obvious Heath Ledger comparison is going to happen, but I'm not going to get into it here, because people will get angry. I know I joked about Dora getting the Best Picture Oscar, but for real this time, Mr. Phoenix needs that Best Performance Oscar. You know what? I need to reshuffle my own awards for one of my end of the year videos. Whoa, not so fast. The OST, along with the actual soundtrack, is a treat. The OST is unsettling yet beautiful all at the same time, and the soundtrack blends so seamlessly with what's happening on screen. You have to know that this film is depressing. It tackles some pretty tough themes like mental health and abuse. It's unsettling to a degree as well. I had subtle goosebumps for most of the runtime. How was this the clown movie that unsettled me more? I was terrified of this fucker. Yet, when the film is funny, it's funny. The gags are a perfect blend of dark humour that never detract from the tone of the film. On the topic of humour, I'd like to thank Joker for bringing Spider-Man 3 memes back, not that they ever left. This scene is a masterpiece, I'll do a whole fucking video essay on it, just, just watch me. You know why I think this film works so well though? DC, listen up. I think Joker works so well because it doesn't have to sacrifice any artistry. There's no connection to any of the DCEU, there's no setup for a sequel. Come to think of it, that's why I think Wonder Woman, Aquaman and Shazam were more enjoyable on the whole. Sure, they connected to the DCEU, but it was such a minor part of the whole thing. Shazam even used that fact as humour. I think DC needs to focus on projects like Joker. You cannot beat the MCU, it just isn't going to happen. But making independent films like this is where you seem to truly shine. I'll reserve my full opinion on this stance until we get the Suicide Squad reboot. But I can tell you now, knowing that Birds of Prey is tied to the 2016 Suicide Squad is all I need to know that it isn't going to be good. I don't think I can go any further without getting into spoilers, so here is your warning. If you haven't seen this movie, skip to this time to hear my final verdict. I'm so glad they managed to do a Joker origin story while still keeping it vague enough. The adoption plotline and the fact that Joker hallucinated certain scenes was a wonderful way to keep viewers on edge. It was also nice to not be treated like an idiot, except for that one Fight Club scene. It's so rare for a film like this to just present things and assume that you've been paying attention the whole time. The devil is in the details. I love how Joker made a smiley face on the wall before killing his co-worker, or how he wrote live with Murray on his mug whilst practicing for the show. I was going to get into that setup here, but I want to do a full video on it, so stay tuned for that. The only film between now and Zombieland is Gemini Man and... I'm not making that my only video this week. The tie-in with the Wayne murders was a nice touch, I mean it wouldn't be a Batman related film without them kicking the bucket, but having it tied into the chaos kept it from being jarring. This is a shorter review, but honestly I want to keep it vague because you need to go into this as blind as possible. I was going to tell you to watch it once, watch it twice, but clearly you all already did that. 
So, my recommendation. If you haven't seen this film yet, go and see it on the big screen. Support these types of movies. I'm so glad that this film is getting this much attention. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? I'm aiming for 100 now because somehow I gained 25 subs in a week. Seriously, thank you so much for all the support on the Fear the Walking Dead videos. I was really worried about doing TV show reviews, but trust me, I'll be making more. If you have a recommendation, let me know. This week's videos will be Gemini Man and another Joker video. Next week should be Zombieland and Farmageddon. Why are so many films coming out on October 18th?